Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 3 And today I'm going to be giving you part 11 of what if Naruto was neglected with Jashin sealed inside of him Remember to give this one to 100 like as usual Share this to all of your friends in your social media platform And also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was an elite blue eye Uchiha over on Anime King. And over Anime King 2, I post a new episode of What If Naruto had the rarest bloodline. So go ahead and enjoy that. And yes, you heard that correctly. I indeed have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, and Anime King 3, which I post What If on every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be replying talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what is we begin this new episode? Start the intro. So, the last time we left off, as Naruto made a deal with Gato, Gato didn't even know that he was signing a deal with the devil. With that underway, Kakashi woke up as he felt rather drowsy. He felt weak, tired, exhausted. Kakashi was confused by the state that he was in. It was like he was sedated as he glanced around, confused at what the hell was going on. He soon then came to realize the stench of blood. He rushed downstairs to see Tsunami, Inir, and Tazuna. All of them were dead. Yes, they were dead. They were there with their throats slit. They were dead. Kakashi was stunned. How, how could this even happen? He had no idea what the hell happened. How, how were they dead? His mind couldn't comprehend how did this happen. How did he sleep through all of this? As Kakashi went to wake up Tenzo, who was outside, who had created a house and Naruto, was being under his watch the entire time and from what Tenzo noticed Naruto had to move so that was a plus but the house was a mess and the family was dead as the two groups of Jennings came outside they were trying their best not to break down at the sight that they saw but Kakashi and Tenzo had a secret mission though they told the kids to stay here as they decided to fulfill that mission as Kakashi told Minma to make sure Naruto did not go anywhere. Meanwhile, Naruto finally arrived. As he came out of the crow just as usual, as Gato was surrounded by his man, he did not trust this kid one bit. Well, if he wanted to join him, perhaps he would let him be one of his associates, but he did not trust him. As Gato, Naruto started to speak to strange things, like he was talking to someone else. But his questions and answers were directed towards Gato. Gato was confused by the whole statement and ordeal. Until Naruto brought something up from the depths of hell. Scaring Gato and their man. As Naruto told them that when the souls of the dam died. The ones that reeked in darkness. They are turned into the spiritual form of what they see themselves as. Monsters. To suffer like that for eternity. And that is exactly what Gato saw. As a beast crawled from the pits of hell. By the time Kakashi and Tenzo arrived, everyone was dead. Every single one was dead. The both of them were beyond shock at the sight. Gato was there with a symbol crossing his head. It was a circle with an upside and down triangle. As they were shocked. They decided to make their way back to the Jennings. As they moved through the slaughter. They saw one man that was not there as they asked him what happened. The man told them the monster did it. Meanwhile. As Minmo was looking towards Naruto, who seemed to have fallen asleep somehow. Yet he was on his feet, but he was not answering any of them. Not that he usually did, but his body was slumped over like he was actually sleeping. They could not tell, because they chose not to say anything to him. And he chose not to speak to them either. It was then that he heard screams of panic and chaos. When Takashi and Tenzo arrived, 
They were informed by Minma about their screams. They made their way to the sound village. To what they saw, it terrified them to no end. Bodies littered the entire place. Kakashi told them all to stick together as something rushed past. The thing tried to knock Kakashi down as he managed to stab it with his kunai. But all he saw was a black goo and tip of his kunai. As the thing ran past, it made a strange sound that seemed to just gut down into your system, into your nerves. The Jennings were petrified by the scene. With that, they quickly got the hell out of the land of wave. As nothing was left, no one was left alive. As Naruto arrived as he stood there, as he watched the Konoha team leave, the Naruto that was always coming from the eighth bird was none other than a clone. But this was different from a normal clone, as his body was made up of pure concentrated darkness. You could see that as he broke into darkness and he flew back into Naruto, flying on the ground and seeping into Naruto's feet as Naruto walked, he went into his mindscape. As he felt different, Jashin could see that quite well. He was surprised that the Kayubi her hair was turning a bit black, as she was confused, as she never even noticed that. But Jashin seemed to have noticed all along. Seems like she was also doing something, but the Kayubi paid no more mind as she started to focus on what Naruto was saying about him changing as well, as he felt weird. Jashin simply smiled and told him that he was getting stronger. Something was happening that not even she could really comprehend, but it was happening. And she needed to find a way to understand what and how exactly this was going on. But for now, at least Naruto was getting stronger. So with that, they got back to Konoha as everything was told. The teams were given a rest period. After what they saw, their young genuine minds couldn't handle it much. Yes, as Kakashi informed Minato everything that happened and about Naruto breaking the rules once again and what he did giving back Zabuza his blade. Meanwhile, the hidden sand, as the Kazakagi was currently talking to the snake Sani to speak about the upcoming invasion that they were going to perform at the Chunin exams. But most of this plan relied on his daughter, yes, his daughter. And right here, Kunoichi, her name was Gar. So, yeah, guys, those so basically, let's put it all just again. Switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So, let's begin this new episode. It was a solid iron room, rather thick room. It seemed to be in Inertiable. Iron wall. The ground was tough, hard stone. Over to the side was a small toilet. It was solitary. It was dark. Pitch black darkness. You couldn't even see your own hands. No light. Not even a single trickle of light. Small holes were there so he wouldn't suffocate. But he was still trapped in solitary. He could not see. He could not hear. As solitary was deep underground. Away from the actual prison. Because that is where he was right now. Naruto was in prison. As he lay there in the cold. Damp. Dark cell. He did not move. He did not react. He just lay there. Yes, a lot has happened in the past two months. It has been two months since they went on the... Hid away mission that is now not even a village anymore. The ports had been empty, houses were completely empty. No one could explain the phenomenon of everyone getting slaughtered, the bodies everywhere. Although the fire lord was going to use that and capitalize on it to spread the fire country even further by turning the hidden wave, tearing the entire section down into a land of fire given the fact that it was closest and not to mention they had an alliance with Konoha well not much of an alliance but an agreement so he was gonna capitalize on that the fire lord was a rather greedy man after all the death and the suffering of the people did not bother him not even one bit as long as he got what he wanted meanwhile in the office Minato had a monitor in front of him Jurei was there as well as he had an elbow on the table looking at the monitor on the screen there was Naruto. A couple weeks back, he was just sitting there. He had a trolley with food on it. Prison food. As the video camera was taking everything. The guards over to the side wasn't really paying much of attention. Both men were silent as they watched. A rather large man sit down beside Naruto as he started to talk. As you couldn't see or hear what exactly he was saying. As his mouth was down, but he was speaking to Naruto, who decided to pay him no attention. 
that looked to be aggravating the man. So he grabbed Naruto's head and forced Naruto to face him. Minato read the man's lips. He has watched this more than 10 times already. Are you listening to me, punk? The man said. As Naruto's eyes turned towards the man before grabbing his tray as he slapped it across the man's face, throwing him over. The guards then came to try to stop Naruto from what he was doing. It was then that he lost it. He attacked everyone, even the people that weren't doing anything. He picked up the table and threw it. Three people died that day. One guard badly injured to the point where he had to be rushed to immediate surgery. Jiraiya was gawking at the display of strength and power. The scary thing about all of this was, Naruto had a suppression steel on him to limit his chakra to just the barely surviving amount. So how in God's name was he able to lift a full grown man and also a table like that? The kid was a shinobi yes but without his chakra, he wasn't given much training so how was he that strong? It took 20 guards to stop him all of them over the jail came. They had used a seal on the ground as it electrocuted him. Not to kill him but to stop him from doing what he was doing. He was then severely beaten, knocked into submission before he passed out. He wounded several of them. But the last one that he grabbed though, the man was still unconscious to this day as he was in a coma. As the man had inner bleeding in his brain, surgery was quickly performed. They didn't even know when he was going to wake up. Minato sighed as he looked towards the monitor once again, before it ended. As Jiraiya sat down over to the couch, neither man said nothing, as he just remained quiet. The reason why Naruto was in prison was because of the recent activities. Minato had warned him over and over again, but yet he gave the enemy, he gave the enemy the blade back. That was a sign of treason, any other person. That did what Naruto did would have long been executed for their crimes against Konoha. But Minato had let things slide. But this was too far. Despite Inari now being dead, Naruto going against direct order and trying to kill the boy, not to mention giving Zabuza his blade back, refusing order over and over again on the wave mission. Minato decided to show him that he wasn't above the rules. So he gave Naruto the ultimate punishment. Two months Naruto has been in prison. Two months. The incident that happened that Minato just showed Jiraiya was what put him in solitary. He's been in solitary for a month now. Yes. As that happened the last few weeks on the last month, you should really get him out of there, said Jiraiya. As he looked towards Minato and talking about solitary, he said, Most people lose their mind in a simple week. How is he able to stay in there for a month? He, he told me he prefers it. You you spoke to him? This was the first Jerry was hearing of this. He thought that Naruto was being in cell as normal when he came to find that Naruto was in prison. I went there to speak to him. And he told me he'd rather stay here to reflect on his actions. Really? Said Jerry. Yes. The guard said that he has been doing nothing. He hasn't been talking back. He hasn't been cursing. He's just melted out. He's been in Salter for a month now and he hasn't done anything out of the way. He received his food and eat. I think it's time to take him out of there completely. How long were you planning on letting him stay in there? Otherwise, Al Saraya. I don't know. I was just hoping that something might happen but this, this is surely a change. I went to visit him. Flashback. The door of Solitaire opened, as it was the first week, the second day, since Naruto has been thrown in here. As the bright face of Minato Namikaze could be seen, but he was not smiling, his face was stern. His blue eyes looking down at the child that was on the ground, who slowly squinted his eyes to the light, hit his eyes. As Naruto blinked before his eyes, focused on Minato, he said nothing. I saw what you did, said Minato. How? How did I defend myself, said Naruto. I fought. 
How are you so strong? Said Minato. Your chakra has been sealed off. You just have the bare minimum to survive. There is no way you should have been able to throw in a six feet man over your shoulder like that. You know what he told me? No, said Minato. He told me that in here he's the boss. And that I was going to have to be his bitch. And do some things that didn't sound too right to me. So what do you had me do? Just sit there and allow him to talk that way. But the guards, they got in my way. And you attacked them. You should have gave up. Now you're in here, said Minato. Yes, it would seem that way, said Naruto. Don't you care? Minato asks. No. I want to stay here, said Naruto. What? No, in here, I mean. Solitary. It has given me enough time to think. To reflect on my past actions. You... Minato didn't know what to say. It took him a moment. Are you saying that you see that you have done wrong and you're trying to change yes said naruto well i could get you no i would like to stay here for a while said naruto this was the first civil conversation he was having with his son as minato looked at his boy who was saying that he wanted to stay here because he wanted to repent for his actions i was gonna make you stay in prison for a month to make you learn from your actions and then I was going to make you take the tuning exam with your team. They are still out there training and going on missions. But from what Kekashi told me you were able to take on Reika of the Seven Ninja Swordsmen. What happened to his body? I don't remember, said Naruto. How can you not remember? My head is a bit fuzzy. Naruto. Yes. Does the fox take over your body sometimes? No. Then how do you not remember? I'm sorry, but I just don't. This was the first time his son was saying I'm sorry to him. Even if he didn't read the meeting that way, but it was the first time. All I know is I fought him now. one. That would put you well above the status of Jenny. If you really want to stay here and recollect on your actions, you can. But... When you're out, I can't have you take part in shooting exams, if you want, said Minato. Your team is still training so they can be ready for the time that everything is said and done, said Minato. It was hard to speak to Naruto because he never really raised him as his own like he did with Menman Mito. Yes, that will be fine, said Naruto. As he went quiet, he then looked back up, if that is all, you can go now. Minato simply glance for a few seconds before he left in the flashback wow said Jaraya so he's changing are you sure this is not some plot for him to just get out of there I offered to release him but he said that he wanted to stay behind he wanted that he's different did you tell Kushner no why not she won't talk to me what she knew that we would have to put him in jail, but she thought that I would never go that far. No, she's angry. Really? After everything, said Jaraya. Minute lowered his head. Look, sorry. I know it's a low blow, but the kid had been through a lot. No, is she? She's turning soppy, Jaraya said. She's still my wife, said Minato. Yeah, no, and I apologize, but still. She's managed to loosen up over the past weeks though. But she keeps on asking me when am I going to release him. She told me it's better to have him here in the house than have him locked away in prison. And like you said, what if this is all just an act? That is why I didn't tell her anything. Did she visit him as Jaren? Yes, a couple of times. But he refused to talk to her. But still he spoke to me. That is the confusing part. Curious sigh. This kid has always been a mystery from day one. What about the attacks? Minute aside, they become less frequent, but they, they're still happening. Three people die in the past two months. I feel like a failure, Sensei. Being Hokage, being the ray, sunshine, hope of this village, I'm unable to stop the deaths. Don't worry, Minato, we will find this person. And they will get what is coming to them. It's only a matter of time. No one stays in the darkness for that long. I hope you're right. 
Wait, what about the teams? The squad? How are they coping with this? Well, to say it bluntly, they didn't really like him that much. But I've been having them assigned to Team 6 to do missions. Well, the ones out of the village. Joint missions. Other than that, they've been going on D ranks and low C ranks. Kakash said that they're working well together. The girl. She's like a fan of Sasuke, so she does pretty much of whatever he says. She realized that she's not really fit to be a Kuniwichi because right lately, Kakash said that she has been asking him for extra training because she wants to help Sasuke more. <laughs> yes, the Uchi is quite popular with the ladies, said Jiraiya. Just like you when you were younger. But I bet he's just like you in that regard. Only wanting one girl. As Minato simply smiled. I love Kushina, he said. Can't find myself loving the other woman. So, Jerry said, about the tuning exams. They're coming up in a few days. Are you gonna release him? Yes. In fact, today is the day that he get released. I think he has done enough coping. Well, if you say so, said Jerry. Meanwhile, at the cell, as Naruto's eyes were closed, but that wasn't a strange part about it. It was his appearance. It was no longer human. Slowly, his appearance started to return back to normal as he opened his eyes slowly. Despite the darkness, he could see everything. His eyes were so well adapted. He could see through the darkness. As Naruto smiled, how was that, he said. That was perfect, Naruto can say, Jashin. It's only a matter of time before you evolve fully. I told you that staying here was a good idea. You get three meals a day. Not to mention, you get to train and practice. Why do they think that you're doing nothing in here? You're just getting stronger and stronger. As Naruto was standing in the mindscape, as he looked over his body. It's all thanks to you, he said. The both of you. As he turned towards the Kayube, her hair had turned completely black. Well, you deserve it, Naruto she said. And all of them out there deserve death. For all they've done to you, it's only a matter of time before you get your revenge. And it will be glorious, she said. As Jashin nodded with that, as everything was going wonderfully. Meanwhile, Donzo was currently furious. It has been months, months since he was able to make a contact with the boy. Donzo did not push his luck of sending his roots toward the scene. Minato had placed highly trained guards outside the cell 24 7. The cell was soundproof because enemies that usually get placed in solitary, well, People didn't care if they live or die. But Naruto wouldn't kill himself. Donzo knew that. But it has been months since he spoke to the boy now. His plan of taking Konoha, using Naruto as his perfect weapon, killing Minato wasn't working so well. He was failing miserably. He hasn't got no right chance of taking out Minato. Things are not working in his favor at all and he was furious about them. And not to mention the weapon that he wanted to use. It wasn't in his grasp. And now all Donzo had to do was wait. Wait and wait and wait and wait. He smashed his fist into his throne. He was tired of goddamn waiting. Meanwhile, Menma couldn't be more happier. Two months of uninterrupted bliss. Not seeing that monster. He glanced towards Mito. As she threw a kunai towards him, he knocked it away. He couldn't tell what she was thinking when it comes towards that monster, as she never voiced her opinions, but it didn't really matter, he was happy. His relationship with Hinata has grown immensely, as they share many kisses many times now. He knew he wasn't ready for the next step in the relationship, or neither was she, but there was something that was about her all lately. She seemed down about something, something that he didn't really understand. As he's been trying his best to provide everything for her, trying to make her happy, but yet he was down. He didn't really know why, as he wondered if it was some clan business. She wasn't one to talk about her clan that way, as she always kept things to herself. As she wouldn't hear the clan dirty laundress out in public. And he respected that about her, so he didn't ask. But she seemed rather upset about something, and whenever he asked if she was fine, she just said yes, and gave him a smile which he knew was fake. Her real smile was much smaller and kinder, but this one seemed forced. He didn't know if it was him or what, 
But she told him that she loved him. It's nothing for him to worry about. It's her. That is what she told him last week. And he decided just not focus about it that much. But he still wants to know if he can do anything to help her. Mito and him finally stopped. The both of them were panting a bit. As over to the side, Sasuke was on his back. As he was looking up at the sky. Sasuke and them had been training. Soccer was unconscious. The group had been bonding lately. As it would have been good if the, all of them had been placed in one team. Ami was unconscious as well. As the both of them had passed out because of Lou Chakra. They had been trained the entire time. Sasuke was strong but when compared to Mito and Minma. Mito could match him but Minma could outright defeat him. But if he came to a one-on-one -on -one fight with her and Sasuke. Yeah, Sasuke would win. But the two of them ganging up on him. Because Sasuke wanted to prove himself. He wanted to show that he's getting stronger. Not to mention his Sharingan has been activated. He said it happened when he came home after the massacre of the Hidden Weave. Which no one could explain what happened. None of them had talked about Naruto. Neither his teammate, neither his Sakura. And they seemed to like it that way. Kushina came outside. You guys really overdid it, she said. She looked around at the two unconscious girls. Are you guys okay, she asked. We're fine, mom. Just a bit rough housing. But we're fine, said Minma. Kushina released a sigh. She went over and picked up the two girls. And she brought them inside. Having them lying outside like this in the cold would do them no good. As Sasuke lied there until a hand came in front of his face. He grabbed it as Minma pulled them up to his feet. Sasuke staggered a bit but Mito grabbed his shoulder. Are you okay? She asked. Yeah, I'm fine, said Sasuke. So what now? Are we done? Well, considering that we went a bit hard today, I suppose we can call it a day, said Minma. Besides, I have a date with Hinata. I'm gonna go and grab a shower, he says he ran off. Mito simply smiled. What, said Sasuke? Oh, it's nothing. I'm just happy. Why, Sasuke said. What do you mean, why? Can't I just be happy? For my brother, she said. If you say so, as he started to walk off. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Nothing, Sasuke said. I was just making a comment. Hmm. As she looked towards him. What? What's wrong, he said, stepping back a bit. Oh, nothing. You're messing with me, said Sasuke. As she laughed and walked off. Meanwhile. The door of the cell opened up. The two guards stepped aside. As Minato looked down towards the ground, he refused to even have a bath. Saying that he just wanted to stay here for the time being. So he kind of smelled. But Minato wasn't focused on that. As Naruto did not look up. Naruto said Minato. As Naruto slowly got up to his feet, he looked up. Minato saw his eyes. They were different. Usually his eyes were bright red, but now at the corners they were this haze, like a dark haze settling in the corner of his eyes, mixing with the red, the crimson with the black. Are you okay, said Minato. Why are you here, said Naruto. It's time that you leave this place. You have been in here for long enough. Why? Have I done anything to show you that I deserve to leave? Aren't I a monster that deserves punishment? You did, and you have. Spent your time for the past two months getting punished. I told you that I would make exceptions for you to take part in student exams, and you must want to get out of here. Well, it's a lot better than home. Why, said Minato. At least here I don't have anyone. What, what do you mean? Well, knowing that you family are upstairs eating, while I'm down in a cell suffering, Make me feel like garbage. At least here I know that no one is here to eat and enjoy themselves. As Naruto looked towards the ground, yes, it was nice. That scared Minato. For someone to enjoy the state of this place, confinement, that was just beyond scary. Well, that's, that's enough, said Minato. I'm going to take you back home. You will participate in student exams. I hope that you learn your lesson. Because next time the punishment will be worse if you do anything out of the way again. Do you understand? Minato looked towards Naruto didn't answer. Do you hear me? 
Did you enjoy killing those thousands of people in the third great Shinobi war? Minato was taken aback by the question. What? Did you enjoy killing those people? To cut their throats using that technique of yours. What was it called again? Hiri? Hirishin? Did you enjoy seeing the light leave their eyes as you move about? Slicing your throats, knowing that they weren't even in your league. Did you enjoy seeing the pain and suffering on their faces? No, of course not, said Minato. But it was war, and that was necessary. Why are you asking me this? I was just curious. Said Naruto as he got to his feet. As he fully stood up. Minato wondered if he was losing it, but he could swear that Naruto was not this tall before. He must be seeing things, right? Or it's just because he hasn't seen him in a long while. As Naruto walked past him stepping out, the guards narrowed their eyes towards him. This was a shocker. They know that they were keeping a boy in solitary. They were sliding meals under the trolley. Yes, there was a small hatch that they would slide meals under. But they did not open it once. Yet it was a boy so young. Different guards, different shape at every point in time but still it was a boy how did he survive so long in solitary they could not hear him so they did not know but they knew who this boy was after all he was a hold of the 90 of fox these were ninjas so they knew that a seal is different from a human they knew that he was not the fox unlike the idiotic civilians but the boy hasn't making it good on himself as he has been causing a lot of problems lately so his father decided to punish him once and for all a punishment that was well deserved. Perhaps it might do him some good and make him stop acting his way. Perhaps. At least for their sake. Time skip. As Minato flashed right into the yard with Naruto in tow, who was right beside him. As he removed his hand from Naruto's shoulder, as the yard was a bit packed with people. Sasuke was over to the side along with Ami and Sakura as they saw him first. Sasuke did see him first though. As Kushina was there, talking to Hinata and Menma. As she was smiling, she paused when she saw him too. As Mito was standing there as well. Minato looked towards him. Kushina looked towards him as she looked down towards Naruto. His clothes look rather ragged, not torn but just ragged. And like they haven't been washing some time now. Menma clenched his fist hard. Hinata noticed that. As she turned towards, a small smile came on her face as she quickly stashed it away. When she learned that he was in solitation, she was glad because he couldn't tell Minma about what happened between them. But yet this part of her missed him. She has been feeling down about it and she hated herself for it. Minma was trying to find out what was wrong with her. But how could she tell him that she missed his brother, the demon that everyone supposedly hates? That was just wrong but yet she missed him and she cursed herself over and over for missing him but there was nothing that she could do to convince her mind otherwise she knew what she felt and she missed him and she hated she really really hated that she had tried time and time again to convince herself that this was a wrong way of thinking but yet her mind seeing him now a smile that came on her face and that made her quite angry that she was smiling at his arrival what what why she cursed herself over and over but no matter how she cursed herself her mind just still wouldn't tell her no naruto said kushina as she stepped forward she did not go close enough though the last time she went to visit him he didn't say a single word to her he refused to even acknowledge her presence there i thought it was time for him to come home said minato kushina nodded at him as she had asked him to free Naruto. It is better that he was here than there. Despite him not talking to them and hating them. She didn't know why but it was better that way. As Naruto looked over himself. She noticed that as well. Why don't you go have a shower? In the upstairs bathroom she said. What? Said Menma. Why would you want that thing to be in the upstairs bathroom? He don't deserve it. Menma. Kushna said. Menma glared at her. Yes, he actually glared at her. Her eyes snapped towards him as he cowered down. But it was her second he did glare at her for defending that monster 
as he turned his head. As Naruto looked towards Kushina, as she waited for a sarcastic remark or something that would hurt her heart once again. Okay, that was all he said, confusing her. She looked towards Minato confused as Naruto went inside the house. The chatter then started back up. Kushina went towards him as this was going to be the most she has talked to him in the past few months as she started to talk. What's going on? It's different. Yeah. You weren't talking to me so it was hard for me to tell you that he has changed. Change how? He's more mellowed out. Remember I told you he said that he wanted this and I told you to bring him back she said. Yeah. But still. He. He's different. I don't know how it happened or why but he's changed. Kushnan looked at him. How so? Like, good change or strange change, she asked. Strange change, he said. I mean like, completely acting different or still angry at us. I don't know, said Minato. We'll just have to... I don't know how to work it. Minato was interrupted. Hinata turned as her face turned bright red. Standing there was Naruto. He was naked. He was not wearing a single ounce of clothing. As Sasuke turned his head along with Minma, Mito turned her head as well. Ami glancing for a few seconds before she turned her head. Kushina moved forward. Why are you naked? I do not know how to work the shower. I've never been in one before. Those simple words hurt her heart. But it was true. Despite how bad it sounded, he was always sprayed with the hose. By Lily. I'll, I'll, I'll help you, she said. As Nurta made his way upstairs, she followed him. The walk was silent. As they arrived. Okay, this one's to turn the water pressure on, she said. This one's to turn it up. And this is for the hot water. And this is for the cold water, as she showed him all of the knobs and what they did. There's the soap and everything and a towel to dry yourself off. I'll get you some of your clothes, she said. I didn't see your jacket in your things. So I... I don't know if it was wash. It was hard to talk to him. Just looking at him made her feel pain. Pain within herself at the things that she let slip by. But now why was he acting this way? She started to walk off. Tell me something. She paused. When you were a shinobi and you kill people, did you enjoy seeing them die? He asked. She blinked at the strange question. Of course not. It was a part of a job, she said. Oh, okay, he said. She made her way off, confused by that question. Laughter was in Nurta's head. As it was the laughter of the three of them. It's working, he said. As he was speaking to the Kayube, Perfect, Nurta Khan, she said. I told you would rather their senses to see you act in this way. And then in a fly just... <sniffs> snap. For someone who said to be the Hukaki, who was supposed to be smart. He's rather dumb, said Naruto. Yes, let them believe that it's working. That you've changed for a little while. As we plan, everything is going perfectly. He's gonna put you in the children exams. And there you can cause as much ham and death as possible. As Naruto smiled at that, time skip. As Kushina was talking to Minato, Minma had offered to help her but she told him that she was fine. As she knew where the coat was. It was Hinata. She left her coat inside but outside was rather chilly and she was now going back for it. It was just an excuse to see if she could see him. To make sure that he keep his mouth shut, that is what she kept on telling herself. As she walked inside, Minma was waiting for her to go on their date. She paused when she heard footsteps turning. It had to be him. As she finally got to see him after these long months of waiting, he was just standing there looking at his hands. Before looking up at her, I've been meaning to talk to you, she said. He looked towards her. Before stepping forward, ignoring her statement. Do you hear me, she said. 
She stepped in front of him, stopping him as he was about to walk by her. He looked down towards her. She was confused. Did he grow? No, he couldn't have grown that much in just months, right? About what? Said Naruto. His tone, cold. About you keeping your mouth shut. My mouth shut? About what? He asked her. About what happened between... She was caught off guard when he pushed her into the wall with a lot of force. It actually hurt her a bit. But he then picked her up, literally used his arms on her waist to pick her up off the ground as he planted his lips on hers. A violent, meekle session then happened. As much as she tried to force him off of her, he did not relent. As her lips then started to lean into it, she started to kiss him back as her hands wrapped her in his waist. The moment she did that, he threw her off as she fell down to the ground. She looked up at him, panting, her face red. So you don't want me to tell Mainma about that, he said, as he looked at her, before stepping forward. Well, you, no one can tell me what to do. You hear that, as he lowered himself. I do what I want. As he reached out and placed on her cheek, I take what I want. And what I want is you at the moment. So it's best if you keep your mouth shut and don't order me around. After all, it's not like anyone if you can tell me what to do. As he trailed his hand on her lip, she never found herself completely frozen. He just walked away after that, leaving her there. Hinata, Hinata, she snapped out of her haze as Minma came in the corner as she was ordering her feet. Hey, what's up? Where's her jacket? Oh, I'm sorry, I was just daydreaming, she said. About what he asked. She moved forward. You. And she gave him a hug. Oh, that's so sweet, he said to her. Come on, let's go get your jacket. Time skip. Two days later, Minato and Kushner was in the parlor talking. It's been strange, Kushner said. No violent reaction. He's just been calm. I'm not even sure if that's the same route anymore. That went insultory. Yeah, I know what you mean, said Minato. He's... He's just calm. He just wants to... I, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know what to do, said Minato. About what she asks. About his current state or everything. He's different. It's still hard to talk to him, though. Yeah, I know what you mean, she said. But perhaps this is for the better. The change... In this state, it's better to talk to him. He's not lashing back out at us. Except for that weird thing that he asked me about killing. Yeah, that was weird too, said Minato. But still, it's a lot better. Well, the tune exams are coming up in two more days. The ninjas are already coming from other villages. Where is he? He said that he wants to take a walk. Seeing that he has no training at the moment, the time is already too short for him to... pick up his training back again. But from what Kakashi told me about the mission, he should be planning himself quite well. Has he spoken to his team? Yeah. Kakashi said the same thing. He has been just... He has been quiet. And thinking a lot, it seems. He's changed. Do you believe whatever the Kyuubi had over him is gone? We're not even sure that that is the case. But still, we don't know anything, Kushina said. Let's just continue to watch him for the time being and see if anything else changed about him. What about Minma? I've been busy at work mostly so I don't know his reaction to all of this. As long as Minma stay away from him and Mikib as well, they don't get in any problems but they haven't spoken to him not even once. Minata sigh. Maybe that was for the better. Meanwhile, as Naruto was walking, he could sense that he was being watched. But he paid him absolutely no mind. Suddenly, someone ran around the corner and bumped right into him. The purse was thrown back as the purse crashed on the ground. The purse got up with a snarl. Hey, what's the... The little boy paused. His frightful eyes landed on Naruto's. As Naruto's eyes seemed just staring his soul, the boy started to shake. Hey, Konohamaru, what's going... The girl froze. Hey, guys, we're... 
the other boy froze. Konohamaru, Udon and Mogi. Konohamaru was the grandson of the third who had died. It had taken a lot for him to get over his grandfather's death. But still he had people there to help him. But now things were much better than then. Konohamaru seemed to forget about what he was running from. Someone else then turned the corner as Konohamaru leaped out of the way. As he was running away from a boy. He was in a black suit. Painting over his face and a girl was slowly walking behind. Damn it, Conqueror, leave the kids alone. Nah, this is the punk deserve this. Hey, come back here, said Conqueror. As he ran past Naruto, his shoulder accidentally bumping into Naruto, while more precisely the thing on his back hit Naruto a bit. As Naruto glanced at his shoulder, Hey, watch it, said Conqueror. Naruto reached out and grabbed the thing on Conqueror's back. As he threw him forward, Conqueror dropped right on the ground. Conqueror was amazed that this brat had the balls to do that. That he just did that. Tamara caught with him as she saw the scene as well. As she was also surprised. Who the hell do you think you are, said Conqueror. As he picked himself up. Seems like you Konoha ninjas really need some lesson. On when you should sit down and shut your damn mouth. And especially touching someone that can whoop your ass all over the village. I'll deal with those brats after I deal with you. Teach them not to bump into someone like me. Brats should know their place. Conkru, are you really going to start something here? Asked the Mari. Well, I guess I can leave the brats alone, but this punk, he deserves it. Through the entire thing, Nurka hadn't said a single word. He just kept on looking at Conkru. As Timar was... Scared. Yes. She was a Konoichi. It was hard to scare a Konoichi. Hard to scare most ninjas and all. But his eyes. They remind her so much of her. What's going on? A voice. It sounds so empty spoke up. Conqueror froze as his hand was near to the bundle on his back. He looked up in a tree. G G G Gara? Long red hair was flowing down. Blowing with the wind. There was a girl. Seeming to be age of 12 or 13. She had a gourd on her back. She was upside down the tree. The kanji for love in her forehead. She had an angular face. With small lips and a small button nose. Her eyes had black lining around them. She wasn't wearing any makeup or anything like that. But her face looked natural. She was like a natural beauty. As Nurt narrowed his eyes towards her. What... All of them were not seen was the skeletons that was around her. It was just shadowy imprints. As Naruto could see all the people that someone had killed. There was a lot of them on his father. His mind could block it out but also focus on that. It was because of what happened to him when he was in solitary. All of those souls from the people of the wave, including all of the bandits that he had the hellhound kill. Yes. It had changed him. In more ways than one, Jashin had predicted something like this, but it had happened faster than she can think. But it had changed him a lot. He was different, not in personality wise. He was just doing that to screw with his family. So when they see his true colors, it would just mess with their minds. Because still, he didn't give a damn about them or anyone else. The only two people he cared about was the two people inside of him. The girl vanished in sand as she appeared on the ground. Are you disgraced in our village again? She asked. No, no, you, you see, shut up, she said. As Conqueror went quiet. And you were just going to let him do what he's going to do and watch. You've been bad, big sister. Perhaps you deserve a punishment. Tamar stepped back. As Gara tilted her head. She was quite scary, as the kids had run off screaming a long time ago. Gara felt something as she turned. Inches away from her was Naruto. San wrapped her on him tight. No, Gara, stop. Said Tamari, no one would ever Gara hold someone like that in her sand. They were good as dead. But killing this guy, whoever he was, it was going to give a bad representation towards the sand. After all, killing a ninja like this out in the open would have bad repercussions. Nurgle looked down toward the sand that tied him up. 
Hmm. You're quite special, he said. He looked up towards Gara, and quite deadly as well. I can see the darkness seeping from you. The other two were confused by the statement. Your eyes, said Gara. They're just like mine. Yes, said Naruto. But, not quite. Would you mind releasing me before I kill you? Tamar was surprised by that. Someone threatening to kill Gara. The sand seemed to tighten around him as Naruto simply laughed. Five. He started to count down. Four. Three. Two. Release him. As the sand dropped and returned back to Gort. The moment the voice said in Gara's head, release him. Mother, Gara said to herself. There is something about this one. Don't try to kill him yet. Something curious about him. Really? I can see his eyes there like mine, mother. Can he be one of us? I'm not sure yet. Only Gar could hear her and see her as well. A woman with beautiful eyes that look like a pinwheel. Almost like a shuriken. She had brown hair with sparkles in it that looked like sand. She was bare feet as she was wearing a brown dress that just hugged her figure quite tight. The black veins were seated back up in her palms. Huh. You're wise. I was just about to kill you, said Naruto. You believe you could kill me, said Gara. As Naruto stepped forward, Tamar was surprised that Sand did not react. It just lay steady. What's your name, said Naruto. Gara. Gara of a desert. What's yours? My name is Naruto. I don't really have a last name. Well, I do, but I don't really go by it. You're interesting, Gara of the desert. Perhaps this exam will be fun after all, said Naruto. Yes, it shall, said Gara. Tamar was shocked. Was, was it two of them flirting with each other or was she just overthinking things? This, this was a first. This, this couldn't be happening, right? Tamari, Conkru. Let's go, said Gara. As she walked off with her teammates. And like that, Naruto was gone. The envoys blinked. What, what the hell? Naruto reappeared in the corner. Suddenly, he was surrounded. Three, mass ninjas looked at him. Not the regular envoys. You're coming with us, they said. Of course. After all, I came to you, said Naruto. It's been a long time. I wish to speak with Danzo. But guys, it'll be in this episode right here. If you want to make part of do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn the bell notifications to be posted. But I'm out for now. See you guys soon. Peace.